Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a study of the variability of the Bengala current. I have been working on this for last several months with uh, Claudia. And today, we are going to present you a brief overview of that. So let's start with this uh, beautiful picture of Cape of Good Hope. And I hope like the presentation goes well today. <laughs> so uh, the presentation has the those uh, four sections. At the beginning, I'm going to talk about previous studies and what motivated me to do this study. And then objectives, results, followed by discussion and conclusions. So uh, this figure schematic over there presented is from a paper by Boebel et al, 2013. Uh, that kind of depicts the whole dynamics, whole process, all the currents over there in the near the Cape Basin and uh, the Benguela current as well. So the Benguela current consists of the eastern limb of South Atlantic subtropical gyre. It transports water masses from three different sources. One is the South Atlantic current, the second is the an Antarctic circumpolar current and the third is the <laughs> Indian Ocean inflow in form of Augulus current uh, through rings and eddies and the Augulus leakage. So the contribution from the Augulus current consists of warm, salty Indian Ocean water. It enters into the Atlantic via Augulus retroflexion region uh, shown over there. So in form of like uh, Augulus leakage and eddies and uh, rings or eddies. So on average, there are like five to six Augulus rings per year, but the number changes because I see like different uh, authors are citing different numbers. And on an average, this the total transfer uh, is about like 10 to 15 soil drop in the upper 1,000 meter uh, as per the past uh, literature. So. The Benguela current is very important because like it plays an important role in Atlantic meridional overturning circulation because it's probably the warmest uh, limb of the uh, of the meridional overturning circulation and it also transport relatively saltier water from the Indian Ocean to the to the Atlantic thereby playing a in playing a very important role in the MOV budget which is uh, the the freshwater transport budget. So uh, the first comprehensive study was 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 by Garzoli and Gordon, and uh, there was a program is called Benguela Sources and Transport Best Program that was that was there by 1992-1993. At in it involved direct measurements of currents using inverted echo sounders and mood current meter array uh, in this whole section. And based on that, Gerzoli found the meridional transport. Okay. Meridional transport of about 13 <coughs> square drop in the uh, 13 square drop towards north, uh, around 30 south. So it's, I would say like more nominal to 30 south because it's not exactly parallel. And then, uh, they found 50% of the meridional transport in the upper 1,000 meter of the water column comes from the South Atlantic, 25% from the Indian Ocean, which is this part, and the remaining 25% is a mix of water from the Indian Ocean and tropical Atlantic Ocean. They also identified two important regions at 30 South. One is this region, which is a steady Benguela regime. You have the steady northward flow in this region, and there is a more like a transient region, which is in the uh, in the western part, uh, and this region is characterized by uh, transient flow. And since they had like different stations here, based on that, they estimated the transport, which is a, a which is given here as a function of longitude, and for thirty. Um, 30 south, you can see like this is around uh, 13 square drop as shown there as well. So complemented to this study, there was another study using Raffles float 
which was uh, by Richardson and Garzali and by others. It was a part of a CAPEX program, uh, which is called Cape of Good Hope experiment. So this float experiment, in, into this float experiment, there are like several floats, I think like it's 33 floats, were deployed around 30 south at a level of 750 meter, and then they let go so that the float traveled and they measured the transport and the um, and the flow field. So it's it's probably the one of the one of the biggest time series that they observed after uh, Garzoli uh, and Gordon. It's a two-year-long observation, and um, the total transport they estimated uh, wastewater transport is about 29 square drop, which is from 18 south to 33 south say from here to here. The mean uh, westward speed of the Benguela current extension in the intermediate water was found to be 2 to 2.5 centimeter, which is a very small, I mean, I kind of like put uh, the numbers here, it's like 1% of the Gulf Stream speed, or you can also say it like 3 to 4% of the Brazil current speed. And the westward transport in the intermediate water between 22 to 35 south was found to be 15 soil drop. And roughly 1.5 soil drop of that transport was, on, was by three ovulus rings that were, uh, that were found uh, during this experiment. So this was one of the, like, um, one of the biggest study that uses a lot of floats. And then after that, they were like, after that even, and before that, there were like other, several other studies using for example, like um, Topix, Podizen, uh, Poseidon, altimetry data by Goni, Silvia Garzoli. Then a Cape Cor famous Cape Cordon paper uh, by Boebel, Lujarjam, Claudia, and others. And there are like series of other papers by Lujarjam. And there is a new book also published in 2006 on Ovulus Current uh, by Professor Lujarjam. And there is, there, there are like other studies by this Bis chalk. Uh, I'm going to come to that later. So there are a lot of contribution, but most of these studies are on the ovulus leakage and how the ring, rings were formed, how much transport of fresh, uh, sorry, salty water and heat from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic goes. So it, this kind of like summarizes all of them. So I, I came across one of the main motivation of this study is uh, this like two papers, one, one is by Biastock et al, 2015, and the other by uh, Beal and Elicott, 2016. These are two nature publications. So what they found here, uh, recent studies have shown there is an increase in the westerlies in the last few decades, and that, according to a linear theory, can increase uh, the western boundary cur currents. And if the western boundary current increases, obviously ovulus current is an western boundary current, the strength of the ovulus current will also increase. And that can result to an increasing heat transport from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic. And it can have several in, uh, implications. So by Diastroko et al, using uh, climate models, found that um, SST shows a decreasing constant between Indian Ocean and the Atlantic, and there is an increasing ovulus current, and it is shown by almost like all the models, whatever they like uh, used for their study. There, this increasing ovulus current is associated with larger heat and cause salt transport to the ovulus corridor. What this figure is showing here is a correlation plot between sea surface temperature and the ovulus leakage. And you can, and this plot, this time series here, is showing us the, the increasing trend in the ovulus leakage by these two models. The first model is an ocean model, and this is our office model. And the, and the model in the lower, they are saying like it's not that significant, although it's showing a positive trend, uh, but it's not, the trend is not that high compared to this two. And when I, when I came across with this paper, I started like looking for more papers on, on this, and I found this paper by Bale and Ellipot across the street. And I found uh, 
using observations they completely saw something something else which is contradict to this study they found broadening not strengthening of the ovulus current since early 1990 so even though the they they acknowledge that the westerlies are are enhancing but it doesn't mean that the ovulus current is also strengthening in case they found the current is broadening so based on that i started thinking of estimating the transport across this section as 35 south and at 30 south using our product developed by claudia and it's a argo and ssh product what it does it takes the argo profiles and satellite c surface height and then it gives us a three dimensional velocity uh, from the surface to down around 2000 meter and we also padded it with um, climatology below that so the i i mean in previous uh, presentations claudia and i both uh, described the data so i'm not going to uh, give you a detail on that so the brief overview is we get argo observations from um, all the floats in the south atlantic and then we estimate dynamic height from there since argo data is very sparse we do not have lot of spatial coverage so what we do we use sea surface height fields and um, we estimate the correlation between sea surface height and dynamic height and they are in the south atlantic they are very well correlated and based on that correlation we fill the gaps so then we have a 0.5 <coughs> cross 0.5 grid where we know the velocity from surface to bottom and once we have the synthetic dynamic height is an um the with a with a reference of 1000 meter we now try to get the absolute dynamic um, height fields or the velocity fields from um from a uh, climatology of trajectory velocities from the argo floats when we would when we add that we get the absolute geostrophic velocity and then we finally add the ekman part to it that gives us a complete uh, velocity three dimension velocity in space space and time so i'm going to show you the results from there so this is a this plot is showing us a map of currents at the at 15 meter the black arrow is showing the current in the north and the south arrow is showing the current in the south direction and the color is showing the magnitude of the current so what we we can see there is a wide space here where we do not have any coverage because this this region is shallower than 1000 meter and argo cannot go in that region so that's why we kept it uh, like we do not have any data there and this line is showing us the 1000 meter isobar so it's very clear from this figure the north pod flowing bangola current this is the ovular retroflexion region and we also see um there are like two distinct regions as shown by garzoli uh, garzoli eta which is the uh, which is the more stable steady bangola current region and the other part is the unsteady transient part so we identify all those all those region and this section ab i'm showing you the velocity uh with depth for this section from surface to 1005 meter and you can identify the northward flowing bengala current here and this is my coastal line and uh, similarly for cd which is parallel to 35 south we have the section and this is also a climatology based on our data set which spans between 2000 and 2014 may and we see like we, are, we can ident identify the bengola current which is much stronger compared to here and it like kind of goes around 1000 meter i would say because it decays <coughs> after that so uh, some key points from this figures are the northward flow is very well visible similar to garzoli and gordon we identify two regimes bengola current extends deeper than 1000 uh, deeper than 800 meter at 35 south but bengola current is relatively shallow at 30 south as seen uh, as seen by the other studies also and we also 
can see the angular rate of flexion region so next what we do we using that velocity field we estimate the transport in the upper 800 meter and i i am showing you a climatological plot, plot of that based on uh, data from 2000 to 2040 and again we can identify the same features like similar features that we that we saw earlier uh, in the earlier plot and uh, obviously this uh, regions ovulus retroflexion region bengal current region and even the transient region are all visible and we also identify uh, some zona transport here this was also shown by garzoli in her uh, in her study it's a small zonal transport uh, in the in the coast. So, this in this figure, I am presenting the latitude dependence of the transport. So, what we have done, we have estimated transport at all different latitudes, starting from 35, uh, 36 to 25. But I must tell you that. I should be doing it from 35 because uh, according to Richardson, Bengula current is kind of confined between 35 south and 20 south by the Oculus uh, current front. Uh, sorry, not by the Oculus, Angola current front. So you can see the variation of the transport with latitude and which varies between 21 swadro over here at 35.5 south to 9 soil drop at 25 south so there is a quite a, quite a bit of variation of the of the transport and in this table i am showing you the past studies uh, by soil drop et al using uh, the classical soil drop theory at 30 south they found a value of 18.7 but our 30 south value is around 13 soil drop uh, which yeah. is similar here yeah. No, x-axis is longitude and y-axis, uh, sorry, x-axis is trans transport, sorry about that. This is, uh, I think, like I did a mistake. Yeah, this is the transport and this is the longitude. Uh, so at 30 south, we have a value around um, around 13 swadro as seen by, the Garz by Garzoli et al. too. And using an inverse model, Fu got a value at 32 south around 20 swadro. But remember, all these study they are using different depths and they have a different criteria of integrating the transport. Because in my methodology, what we are doing, we are integrating the transport from the African coast to the Welbus Ridge at 30 south, which is around 3 east. So all the transport estimates, whatever I'm showing here, is an integration in the upper 800 meter from the African coast to 3 east. But this method, uh, like the methodology used by the other people, they are using other, other um, criteria. Even though they use other criteria, even when I change my, um, my limits are differently compared to theirs, I get similar transport within the error bars. And these error bars here are the standard deviations. So this figure, um, this figure I got from the Namibian Coast Conservation and Management. The reason I'm showing you this figure because I want to show a budget of the transport, meridional transport I would say, meridional and zonal transport in the Venezuela, in the Cape Basin region, and I show that our data product really works well there. Uh, you see this box here. This box has four has three phases and the remaining phase is the African coast. The first phase is at 35 south, the second one is at 30 south and this is this phase is parallel to 3 east. What I found the total input of transport into this box is around 19 square drop and the part that leaves this box in the northward direction is about 12 square drop. And the part, the zonal part that leaves this box westward is around 7 soil drop. And I also have the time series for all these three um, sections. Those are shown in this plot. Figure A 
shows the time series of transport around this section at 30 south. Figure B shows time series around across this section at 35 south and the last is for this section. So we can see like there is a lot of variability uh, in interannual time scale as well as seasonal time scale and the mean values are for 35 south is around 19 square drop as I showed earlier. For 30 um, south is around 12 square drop and 7 square drop is for 3 east. When I say like it's about, so there is little bit error associated with it and obviously there is uh, some standard deviation in the range of 4 to 5 square drop. Sure. Do you impose any kind of mass conservation constraint on the, when you do the cargo and health industry? Um, yes, so the cargo and ultimate trip? Cargo and ultimate trip. Was that box forced to have a conserved mass? No. So this is so what it works out to be. Yeah, yes. yeah, I, I think so. And I was surprised to see that too. Yes, yes. For, I mean, we use the same kind of data for the uh, estimating the meridional overturning circulation, MOC. And there we do the, obviously, the mass conservation and everything. But here is just the velocity. So what I'm showing you here is summation of these two this time series and this time series plot it with this time series over here at 35 sum. So the black dots are the time series at 35 south and the gray is times summation of time series at 30 south and the part which is zonal. And obviously the time series spans from 2000 to 2014 and y-axis represents the magnitude uh, in sweat drop. What I see is a very well match, I would not say very well match, but it's a good match at the beginning of the time series, but something happens after that. Like for example, I identified few of these aberrations from the uh, from these two time series. One is here, which is very visible, which is high value in, uh, in at 35 south. The other is here and the other is here. And there are other places also. But I would say like more or less they match. And um, there can be like different reasons why they are different at, at this, at least at this uh, locations, at, at this uh, point of time. Because this, this mismatch can be attributed to choice of the integration depth. Because as I showed in earlier figures that Benguela current is uh, deeper at 35 south compared to 30 south, where 35 south Bengala current goes deeper than 1000 meter, it can be deeper than 1000 meter, but 30 south is not that deep. So like if I use the same integration level, maybe I am losing something. Also, uh, there can be a vertical transport through the box that I don't know. And we can also lose some transport at the shall shallower level where I do not have any coverage. So then uh, this plot is showing you the variability or the wavelet analysis of those time series. So the first plot is showing uh, the wavelet analysis for 30 south time series for 30 south. The second one for 35 south and the last one is for the zonal section at 3 east. All these plots, like if I consider the first plot is showing me very strong annual signal. So I have a strong seasonality annual signal there at 35 south at certain years. But when I go to 35 south, I do not see any annual signal there. I have some AD like features in, uh, in the time period between three to six months. But the question comes, 35 south is again very close to the ovulus leakage region. So I should be seeing more of these features here. Why not? I, I, why don't I see more features? Uh, there can be a reason because that when I estimate the time series, I integrate it from eastern coast, from the African coast towards the Velvis Ridge. Maybe I am integrating the variability. So maybe I'm not seeing it here. 
I still have to you know see uh, what is the reason behind it but that may be one of the probable reason at 3 east again I do not see any significant annual signal all I see is signal like between 3 to 6 um, month time period this, this tells me like it's very well dominated by the eddies. I tried to do a seasonality at 30 south and 35 south. <coughs> so this red dot, so x axis represents you month, month, y axis is sweater, uh, in sweater. This is the anom anomaly of transport from those time series. And this red dots are monthly values. And if when I try to fit a curve, it gives me something like this. Obviously, it has a lot of spreading in the data. And if I, I can bet if I put a standard error on top of it, I'll have strong standard error there. But when I compare this curve with this one, which is at 35 south, I see more random uh, plots. And the if I if I consider okay I see a seasonal signal annual signal here the amplitude of that annual signal is almost half of that what I observe here again I'm not sure I'm seeing a clear annual cycle at these two locations because the data is I'll, I'll show you in this plot because the data is so sparse I mean you can see like I, I plotted all all of them all the measurements here this is the data spread so I have a very high standard error. So then I wanted to know like um, about the ADs that pa that is passing through the through through those two sections at 35 and 30 uh, south. So what I plotted here, there are like two plots as you can see. This is the anomalies of sea surface height, and this is a molar diagram of that between the African coast up to zero uh, greenish meridian. So this is plotted for all different years and you can see a lot of propagation, mesoscale propagation all throughout and there are like a lot of eddy like structures. There are like a lot of signals that several eddies are passing and when I count them I can get like at least four to five eddies as suggested by the other studies. And this plot on B, uh, like B is the same plot for 30 South. You can see one thing is very clear, the energy of this AD-like feature, features is very small here. So one of the reasons why I see a strong seasonality at 30 South but not at 35 South is maybe this reason. Because I have AD energies, strong AD energies at 35 South that may be overwhelming the seasonal signal there if there is any but at, since at 30 south I do not have very strong energy eddy like energy maybe I am seeing a better um, seasonality there then I wanted to know about the dynamics what I did here is I got the wind stress field from ER interim and I estimated the wind stress curl for that region and this is a climatology of that. These arrows are showing us the direction of the wind and the color is the wind stress curl. Based on that I'm going to show you another plot which is the sweat drop stream function which is this. So this is my sweat drop stream function estimated from the wind stress curve, uh, wind stress curve from ER entering for the same time period of the transport, that is 2000 to 2014. And again, I'm showing you like uh, this box where I showed the budget holes. And let's look at the values what I'm getting here. So, the like if I want to know the value of sweat drop transport at 30 south I should be considering a value at that point and the value at that point is around 2 sweater I would say. At 35 south the value is around again 2 to 3 sweater which is very small compared to the value that I observed from uh, 
from our observation based on Argo and SSH. The values for A and B, A to B was almost 12 sort of, and the values for C to D, uh, like the whole transport for C to D was 19 sort of, which is much, much more bigger than this sort of uh, stream function. This is not surprising because sort of stream function is a very like classical approach and it's a very oversimplified. It misses the inflow from the Indian Ocean. I mean, I, I'm not showing you that. I have another plot that shows uh, like the whole inflow from the Indian Ocean. It doesn't know about the friction. And sometimes it's also challenging to determine how far the gyre is extended to the bottom. So, but there is a similar study by Gray and Riser, 2014. They also found something similar uh, that the values are very small compared to their estimate there. So, based on that, I can say, swear drop balance maybe not. Um, it's, it's a, it gives you an overall idea how the dynamics of the ocean should be like, but may not be enough to explain uh, Bengular current transport. What I'm showing here is statistically significant correlation coefficients between wind stress curve and meridional transports at 30 south and 35 south. The plot on the left, A, is showing us the correlation between transport at 30 south and the wind stress curve at each grid location. So I have the wind stress curve uh, time series at all these grids and then I, you, uh, then, then I have a transport time series for 30, 30 south and I estimated the correlation between them. And again, this is a zero lag correlation. I should be showing you a lag correlation because I um, wind should force then the ocean should move. But I'm showing you a zero lag here. Uh, I see like very strong correlation uh, over here in the range of, I would say like uh, 0.6 to 0.7. And for, 30, uh, for 35 south, when I do the same calculation with time series at 35 south, I see strong correlation here at the eastern part of the, um, of the section where the flow is more steady. And what I do, the lower plot is showing us again a correlation of time series of transport and zonally integrated wind stress curve for the section AV for this one and for the section CD for the lower plot here. These two things are basically the same. Uh, they are all zero lag, uh, they are all representing zero lag correlation. And I can at least say, although I cannot say much because it's not a zero lag, uh, it's not a lag correlation, but I can say the variability of the wind, something to do with the changes in the transport in these two regions, since they are very strongly correlated. But I still have to show, I mean, I have the plots, but I still have to show the lag correlation. And the lag correlation are much more enhanced uh, than these values. So uh, that brings to the end of the talk. And uh, these are the discussion and conclusion. So I give a time series, 15 year long time series. Uh, we present a 15 year long time series for two different latitudes, as well as we give values of transport uh, from 35 south to 22 south. Those transport values is the, is the first time um, because like I don't see any transport values on those sections in the north, northern latitudes. Uh, the mean values are consistent with the previous estimates when uh, we consider the standard deviation and the error bars. The transport at 35 south is dominated by ovalus rings. We do not see any clear seasonality here. Clear annual cycle is visible in most years at 30 south, as shown by the as shown by the uh, wavelet figure. Soil drop stream function is relatively small. The value for the soil drop transport is relatively small compared to the compared to the transport from from our product. On longer time scale, wind stress curve exhibits similar variability as the transport of the Bengala current. 
so in future what i mean i already started talking with uh, with sanki and um, with sanki and hosme uh, so what we want to do uh, is to understand the teleconnection effect uh, or the teleconnection pattern pattern on the overall variability of the bengala current i kind of like uh, did this calculation too but uh, these are very preliminary preliminary and we would also like to understand the variability of the mov phase water transport and it's linked to meridional overturning circulation and also co study the correlation between the transport and sst in that region i would also like to mention the time series has been ex extended uh, from 1993 till date so we have a much longer time series and now i think like we can explore more so okay this is something that i am doing